sixth-ranked Temple Owls next. Get Quakers. On this cold winter's night here at the Plester, welcome as Temple meets Pennsylvania. I'm Larry Rosen, along with Ed Stefanski. Kind of a midwinter's night stream for Pennsylvania trying to play with the Temple Owls. They are awfully tough, Eddie. Tough is not the word, the sixth-ranked Owls. Though Penn is coming in the game, in order to play well, you would think they have to stop Temple in the offensive end. I think it's more Penn's offense. They have a problem scoring. they got to get the ball inside a little bit, and they have to score from the outside. So scoring punch for Penn is definitely needed this, this evening. Uh, Pennsylvania has an awful lot of young players. The one game they won against LaSalle, their junior guard, Walt Frazier, really made the difference, played a fine floor game. Walt Frazier did it in the LaSalle game where he had eight assists. He got the ball in the Phil Pitt's hand. He got it inside. He's going to have to have a big game this evening because Howard Evans and Mark Macon will be all over him. So he has to set the tempo for the Penn Quakers. Now for those uh, Temple Owls, Ramon Rabos, Tim Perry, the big guys get a lot of ink along with the freshman Mark Macon. I really think, though, Howard Evans kicks starting on the defensive end has been a key for them. Well, Howard Evans, as a former coach, I just love the kid, and I think even the opponents just like to watch him play because he can do it all. I know they say he's a point guard this year. I don't believe that because he was a scoring guard before this. It, okay, naturally, maybe a little bit better at the point, but what I'm saying, he does everything well, and he's the guy that gets him going. That is the setup live from the Palestra. We will come back with the starting lineups, the Temple Owls and the Penn Quakers right after this. More than just tough for the sixth-ranked team in the nation. And now for tonight's starting lineup, let's go to the voice of the Palestra, John McAdams. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the University of Pennsylvania Palestra. College basketball's most historic gym. This evening, Palestra Basketball presents a Philadelphia Big Five City Series game featuring the Temple University Owls. the University of Pennsylvania Quakers. Let's meet the starting lineups. First for the Temple Owls, at a forward position. A junior, six feet, seven inches tall from Morrisville, Pennsylvania. Number 32, Mike Breezewick. At the other forward is senior, six feet, nine inches tall from Freehold, New Jersey. Number 33, Tim Perry. the center spot, a senior, six feet, ten inches tall from Carolina, Puerto Rico, number 44, Ramon Rivas. At the guards, a freshman, six feet, five inches tall from Saginaw, Michigan, number 12, Mark Macon. And at the other guard, a senior, six feet, one inch from Philadelphia, number 21, Howard Evans. The head coach, of the Temple University Owls in his sixth season is John Cheney. And for the University of Pennsylvania Quakers, at a forward position, a freshman, six feet, five inches tall, from Frazier, Pennsylvania, number 24, Dane Watts. At the other forward, a freshman, six feet, seven inches tall, from Memphis, Tennessee, number 40, Ben Spiva. A freshman, six feet, seven inches tall, from Brooklyn, New York, number 42, Hassan Duncan. At the guards, a junior, six feet, two inches tall, from Chicago, Illinois, number 11, Walt Frazier. At the other guard, a senior, six feet, four inches tall, from Camden, New Jersey, number 21, Tyrone Pitts. The head coach of the Pennsylvania Quakers in his third season is Tom Schneider. The officials for this evening's game, Fred Heichel, along with John Bonder and Bob Donato. And moments away from tap-off for Tom Schneider. He's got a very young squad, but Eddie, as you well know, one of the best things about youth is resiliency. <laughs> and plus, they'll get older. <laughs> the thing we talked about, Tom Snyder, before the game, that how are they taking these losses, and he said, well, they're young and they're bouncing right back, which is a great sign because after they have the Temple Owls and St. Francis of Loretto away, they go into their Ivy League schedule, and they have to be prepared for the league, just like 
Temple is getting ready for a lot of the good right in the middle of their Atlantic 10 Conference. Pennsylvania has lost to the likes of uh, UCLA and Indiana. And their average margin of defeat, uh, well, well over 20 points. Meanwhile, for the Temple Owls, their average margin of victory is about 18, and they're 8-0 and, oh and rank number six. Again, our officials, John Bonder, Fred Hinkle, and Bob Donato, as the big guy, Hassan Duncan, about to jump center with Tim Perry. We're underway at the Palestra in the hands of Ramon Rivas, and we'll see how Tom Snyder comes out. He's got that tough choice against the Temple Owls, and they look to go 3-2 zone right away. That's Mark Macon, the All-American freshman, buries one, and the streamers come a-flying. Mark Macon has scored in double figures in each of the eight games in his career for the Temple Owls. And as good a recruit as John Cheney has ever had in his coaching career. Well, Penn and Lex, as you said, to go to 3-2, you always have to be aware of the outside shooting. Then if you get outside, they go inside. So Temple has everything. If I had the players, if, Pe if Penn had the personnel, you would, I would think you've got to go man-to-man -man against Temple, but they're out man, so they're going to try to stay in that zone and hope they get a cold shooting Owls club this evening. And here come the Quakers. That's Tyrone Pitts on the right wing. Need seven points for a thousand. We'll keep the watch on that. The point guard is Walt Frazier. Ben Spiva, the freshman, aggressively to the hole. And Ramon Rivas, the defensive rebound. So no shyness from Mr. Spiva. Well, Tim Perry didn't even have to leave his feet, but his dominance inside of shot blocking, and Spiva threw it up long. And they do force the Owls a little bit further on the perimeter than the offense usually sets up with the zone. In the remote, they play behind him with Duncan, kicks it back out front. So that's the strategy there, play behind the big guys. The turn to the baseline by Perry is perfect. Tim Perry became the 26th Owl in the school's history to top the 1,000-point mark against Rutgers a couple of nights ago. 4-0, Temple. Well, here's the end that, this end that they have to do well is score, and it's tough. They're holding them 37%. Temple's holding their opponents third in the nation on defense. Penn has to get good shots early in the game. Penn does not have much of a three-point offense, and the Owls, when they pack in the zone against Pennsylvania, are packing it in 15, 16 feet for the basket. The cross-court pass anticipated by Macon. Here comes a party. Well, Mark Macon, great anticipation. The freshman from Saginaw, Michigan, got the cross-court pass, a bad pass against Temple Zone in their lane, and he goes down and dunks it. Mark Macon has 19 steals on the young season, only 13 turnovers. How would you like to have that in your backcourt? Howard Evans has 14 steals and 15 turnovers, so that's a, that's an excellent ratio as well. The long three-pointer from Pitts is short. Mariswick in the open floor has Howard Evans streaking. Well, the problem early here at Penn is they're taking the shots, but they're not getting back on defense. Transition basket, and it's going to be a long evening, and Penn wants a timeout early. So, two minutes, ten seconds gone by. The Owls on top, eight nothing. Back at the Palestra of Lestrup where Temple has gotten off to the quick start of 8-0. Tom Snyder needed a quick timeout. Well, that is the problem. 8-0, Penn is over the past few years when they're playing the Big Five opponents, have had this problem. They've gotten down early in the game. As you'll see, the cross-court pass, you'd never do it, especially that low in the pass lanes. Mark making great anticipation. He's going to bury this one. With some flourish for Mark Macon. Now you're down eight nothing to the sixth ranked Temple Owls early in the game. You have Penn has to go out. It was a good timeout by Tom Snyder. Calm them down. Now I believe they got to run that 45 second clock down a little bit. You don't want the as the less possessions the Temple has, the less chance of them scoring. Of course, so I think he should run that clock down. Try to get a good shot and say, guys, hey, we played Indiana, we played UCLA. Just go out there and let's try to play the game. Pennsylvania has turned it over about 17 times per ball game, which is not that bad considering how young the squad is. Temple about 12 per game. Again, the zone is packed in. But Dana Watts is open. He has to take that shot from the outside. And they need the good swinging perimeter ball movement to get it to him. It's Pitts working baseline. The lefty in the air. No good. Foul called as Ramon is hammered. And I believe it'll be on Tyrone Pitts as John Bond shows 2-1. First foul of night on well, Pitts. Well, right there, Larry, that was a great shot. I mean, good ball That's movement. Right. Pitts gets an easy four-footer, and he can't connect. You have to put them down against Temple. Teams first. And again, in that zone, is uh, Tom Schneider expecting to change defenses quite frequently tonight. This one yields a Bereswick three-pointer. 
Mike Maurice, the most prolific three-point shooter on the team allows, with his 18th of the young season. He scores him at 17 a ball game, and we're at 11 nothing. Inside move for Spiva. Muscle shot rims out. And out of bounds off Mark Macon. Well, it was a good move there. He just, again, a layup, can't get it there. Five, a young man that was uh, out of Memphis, Tennessee, Christian Brothers, is fouled by Howard Evans. He was recruited by a number of schools down in that area, Mississippi and uh, Tennessee, Middle Tennessee and the like. Chose to come to the Ivy League for the education. Was a center in high school and obviously has very good mobility, which is why they've tried to move him into the forward spot. And the zone defense as expected off the out-of-bounds. Tough zone defense. They do a great job matching up against the opponent's offense, and there's a turnover walk. And it'll be against Pitts, their second turnover, looking for a flashing Hassan Duncan, the big guy, 240-pounder. He is working out of a high post and has yet to officially touch the basketball after about three and a half minutes. We well, hear Penn showing a 2-3. Again, the wing guy has to match up. Ramon Rivas gets it inside, and he's fouled by Hassan Duncan, his first. And Ramon Rivas now able to go to either hand with the uh, much better success than in his earlier years at Temple and that uh, the ability to turn left and go up has added to his repertoire. You like Ramon as a player. Yeah, I do. I think Ramon, uh, again, he's not the star in the team. There's Tim Curry, there's Evans, and now with Macon checking in. But Rebus just does a great job. He's in there, he takes up a lot of room, he bangs. Someone has to do the tough work, and Ramon Rebus is the guy. And I love his look on the court. He never <laughs> smiles. Only, we caught him maybe two years ago smiling when he did something that the kids were yelling from the bench. But the man just has the game face on at all times. His friends call him Chico. And he makes a couple. And it's 13 love. Temple leads Pennsylvania. Is there a whitewash? No. No. That's the freshman from Conestoga, Dana Watts at the top. Spiva works the perimeter. And again to Dane Watts. They're overplaying on pitch with Curry, and that's a tough matchup for Tyrone. Again, the cross court is too low. This time it's Breezewick in the open floor. Well, again, Ben Spiva, another turnover. You cannot throw cross court with that kind of pass. If you're going to throw a diagonal pass like some coaches teach, it has to be a lob pass over the zone, not where it's chest high and can be stolen easily. And again, much of the Al's offense predicated on that solid defense, Eddie. That one's off the face of Duncan. Evans will go by Frazier. Duncan with a flying rejection, but Macon's there. And here come the Penn Quakers. And that's good to see Hudson Duncan hustling back to get the block. And Frazier misses the open 12-footer. No harm, no foul on Rivas. See, Duncan hit the, a little embarrassed, a uh, turnover hits his head, but he comes right back and gets the block. A freshman coming back from New York and blocks Howard Evans' shot. Macon fakes the runner, knocks down the 17-footer. So it's 17-0 after just about five minutes, and it's a nightmare for Tom Schneider. <laughs> wow, nightmare's not the word for it. Penn's got to get on. Someone's got to knock a shot down for him. Where's Pitts? Watts is yet to fire. There's Pitts locked in, double team. Spiva, off balance. But he's an active kid, blocked by Perry, pulled down by Perry. Evans is alone. Well short, Tim Perry for the Wolf. Blocked by Duncan, as at least Hassan will not let Tim Perry have the uncontested jam, and Tom Schneider wants another timeout. And he'll get it from John Bonder. So before Tim Perry gets his two foul shots, we've got a timeout on the floor. And we'll come back, Temple on top, 17, nothing over Pennsylvania, back to the blessed for the night's first 17 points. And for Tom Schneider, well, he's heard a lot of abuse about the schedule that includes all the big five schools, UCLA, Georgia Tech, Indiana, and all. And he says, hey, we're not just the eggheads from the Ivy. Yes, the schedule's a little bit too difficult right now, but these are the kind of people we want to play at Stefanski. Well, what are you going to do about it? Tom Schneider, he didn't make the schedule. The AD before the AD, current AD made the schedule. Now he's at Arizona State. Well, 
But you got to play the games. And you go out there and you play. And you tell the kids you play as hard as you can and you try to work on certain things. You are getting ready for the Ivy League. But the key part being on the schedule, hey, it's been made. It's history. Go on with it. And last year's Ivy League champions, a senior-laden group, was the same exact record after the same exact number of games. And they had played Alabama and Georgia Tech and many of the same kind of schools. Uh, we do know that there'll be some changes in the schedule, that they will not have an Indiana tournament in Christmas time. They'll go down to Texas for a somewhat easier tournament, if you will. But has the philosophy changed in the last five years? Well, I think it has. I think they're going to get a, try to get a little bit uh, out of Ivy League schedule, a little bit easier schedule, something that they can play with as Dana Watts misses an air ball. But again, we just play the schedule. I think that they have to make some decisions. Uh, on College Hall, uh, administration-wise, what, what way they want to go with the basketball program at Penn. That's Ramon Rivas' patented turnaround jumper, only the second time in his career he's knocked one down from 12-plus, and it is 21-0 after six minutes. Because I want to say about Tom Snyder, he's doing his jo best job he can. This job has a lot of handcuffs on it when you talk financial aid, when you talk academic standards that Penn has to get in. So the student-athlete, it's a very fine line in a tough situation, especially the schedule they're playing. And here's another steal out of the hands of Pitts and the frustration foul from Spiva. We'll have a very interesting halftime feature which addresses exactly the concerns you were mentioning. And we do know that Pennsylvania will be playing more of the Northeastern liberal arts colleges in years to come, which is where they can indeed certainly compete for victories, not just compete on the floor. I would just like the Penn people right now to turn the heat up in here. It's freezing, <laughs> Looks like Temple's turning the heat up. They go man-to-man -to, -man to Tom Schneider's team, and Tom's philosophy is, hey, once you're down by 20, you still keep playing. You may lose by 40, but he doesn't just want to try to lose close. He wants to do whatever he can to get back in the basketball game. Again, the rebounds with Duncan behind him. He challenges, and that's in the somewhat of a foolish foul by the freshman as Rebos faces up. Well, that's his third foul, but Re Hassan Duncan is trying to play. Rebos gets the nice entry pass. Watch Rebos turn and face the basket. That's what they teach at Temple right away. See what you have. Duncan thinks he got all ball. He got his little bit in the hand, so Rebos will go to the line for two. 21 zip. Temple over Penn. 13-27 left in the first half. Ramon misses. He's an excellent foul shooter. Duncan will stay on the floor. And one out of two. It is 22 love. As we approach the 13 minute mark. Ray Marshall has checked into the lineup. He's yet another freshman. This one out of Green Run, Virginia. He wears number 52. See, the problem is Temple, they, they don't see 22 nothing up there. If you play for John Cheney, you're going to be on his court. You better play hard. And their Temple Owls are doing everything they can to take the ball away from Penn. So the defense, the passing lanes, they do a terrific job. There's another hand on the ball. Tim Perry goes down, and Frazier tries to find the wide open dunk him, but it's too high. Yet another turnover, number six. Six turnovers, zero points for Pennsylvania. What impresses me about all of John Cheney's teams when they play that zone, not only do they match up so well, but they take that passing lane, that reversal pass away from you. It's tough to run a zone offense when you can't reverse the basketball that well. Tim Berry is a seed box one day. When Timmy turns baseline, expecting him to knock that shot down. That's his patented move from the far side. And we are at 24 nothing. Somebody get out a record book. With the basketball, Jeff Rival from Oregon. Well, Frazier moves right. And it's Tyrell Pitts. Frazier the baseline. Catches iron. Marshall the rebound. Kicks it out front. The three-pointer from Jeff Rival. So it took a senior to get the bucket. And a good shot. Yeah, nice shot. Two shots, two points. Okay. 